Welcome to our tutorial on building a healthcare bot with ChatGPT3. In this tutorial, we will show you how to create a powerful chat bot that can provide quick and efficient responses to common healthcare questions and concerns. Uh, we will use Dialogflow, a popular chatbot development platform, along with ChatGPT3, advanced language capabilities. We will guide you through the process of building healthcare bot that can revolutionize the way uh, healthcare information is accessed and delivered. Imagine having a healthcare assistant at your fingertips available 24 seven to provide accurate and personalized information on medical topics, assist with uh, symptom assessment and offer guidance on healthcare decisions. With the combined power of Diagflow and ChatGPT3, we will bring this vision to life. To get started, we'll need an Azure account to host your chatbot and a Google account to set up Dialogflow. We'll also demonstrate how to integrate the chatbot into a Flutter application for a seamless user experience. Through this tutorial, will explain the concept in simple language, making it easy for anyone to follow along. You don't need to be a programming expert to build your own healthcare bot. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a fully functional healthcare bot that can benefit users by providing valuable healthcare support. So let's dive in and explore the exciting world of chatbot development using Dialogflow, ChatGPT3, Azure, and Flutter. Remember, the possibilities are endless when it comes to chatbot technology, and we are here to help you leverage these powerful tools to transform the way we access and engage with healthcare information. So let's get started. I'm going to dive into the exciting world of ChatGPT3 and learn how to create an open AI account. So let's get started. But first thing first, what is the GPT3? Uh, well, it's like a super smart computer program that can understand and talk like a human. Imagine have a virtual friend who knows a ton of stuff and can help you to find answers to your question. Uh, to access ChatGPT3, we need to create an OpenAI account. But don't worry, uh, easy peasy, I will walk through this process. So, OpenAI. Uh, if you don't have one, you need to just sign up and you are free to go. I already have one, so I will proceed just with the login and go straight to the API. And here we are. Uh, what is very important? Important for us is, first of all, make sure, because we need to create API keys. API keys are basically you have to have pricing plan for that because it's not for free. Uh, so you need go to the billing and make sure you set your payment methods. I already have my card here, but if you don't have one, just add payment card, add payment method, and you will be fine to go to proceed to the next step. So I assume you already done it and uh, go to the API keys. You need to API key to access the GPT-3 request. I already have my created, so I am good. But if you don't have, just click on the create new secret key and create secret key and you are good to go to process to the next step. Congratulations on completing the first step. And now let's move on training the GPT-3 model. 
training the model is like teaching it become even smarter and more knowledgeable. Um, we can use OpenAI's API to train the model using our own data. This means we can provide specific information related to healthcare that will help the model understand and respond better to healthcare related questions. But how do we fine tune the model for our specific healthcare use case? Well, this is all about. So first, let's go to the documentation. And in documentation, go to section fine tuning. Fine tuning is all about the learning, learning the models, how you want to behave them, to specialize them for some purposes. A uh, very important part is for now, maybe in future, uh, it will be much more models, but for now you can fine tune Da Vinci, Curie, uh, Baggage and Ada. Uh, we will go uh, with Da Vinci, it's the most expensive, but for this other purpose we will not make a many requests, so we will not be it will not cost us too much. Here is installation uh, process. If you go, won't go through, uh, we will use Postman for our request, so we don't need it. Pre uh, this is the important part, prepare training data. Uh, your data must be in JSON and L document. Uh, this is necessary for training the data. Uh, we I already prepared some data here. This is the some convert the json.com free free web page. Uh, here on this left side are data what I actually uh, help prepare with Chit GPT. So here is our prompt, some question, what is the flu, and here is the answer. In the real world application, this should be, uh, if it's a healthcare app, so this should be discussed with some uh, legitimate people, doctors, or whatever who knows the stuff. So we are sure that this information are proper for this purpose, it's more than enough. So I have here a few of the prompts, I don't know how much, I didn't count them. And here is our JSON NL in the lines. Uh, so what we need pass to the chat GPT. So we just download and here is our file and go to the documentation. So fine, this step is done. We have our data. And let's go to the create and fine tune model. As we can, it's already, you have to go here. If you have the data, without the data, you cannot fine tune models. Uh, here we go to the, another part of the documentation and we will, go through the APIs, which we will use for our file tuning. Uh, here we can see the APIs for the, for a list uh, of the, of the files. So it will give you a list of all your files. What you have here? You can have upload files, delete file, uh, a retrieve file, retrieve file content and create fine tune. This is going to be important for us. So let's start with upload file. As I mentioned, we're going to use Postman. I already prepared a Postman collection. Uh, so you, you can prepare your own one or you can use in a code. It's up to you for these purposes. It's Postman is more than enough. Uh, as we can see, I paste here the URL and what is very important in authorization in beer token type, you put your uh, key what we created and then uh, headers and body. This is also important. Don't forget uh, put from data data so we can uh, import our file. 
purpose, it's important to have fine tune. So we make sure the GPT new, this file going to be for training purposes. So select file, I will choose the file what we what we create and that should be enough just send it and if you are lucky so we are we uploaded the file so okay we upload our file and we want to make sure that the file is there so we can use uh, the list file api again let's use our postman collection and no, 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 list files. So let's run it. And here, here is it. Here is our file. Uh, okay, we have our file. We make sure it's uh, in a server. So what else? In this part, we've been in create fine tune model. Uh, but so let's find the API, which will help us to crane fine tune model. Crane fine tune Here is the API, uh, a request body and, uh, another, not the other attributes, which you can use in a body for now. We will stick with the basis and the basis are, uh, Create fine tune. Don't forget your key and in body uh, attribute training file. So let's pay, uh, paste there the file what we uploaded ID. Okay, fine tune model. Okay model we want to use DaVinci and let's call it DaVinci custom model DaVinci DaVinci me one let's use just one underscore so it's more readable okay just send it okay we get uh success response that's fine and now Okay, uh, this process can take a uh, few minutes, depends on the on the server, uh, and we can see the process in the list fine tunes. You can find that list fine tunes. And we're going to use this API. So let's run it. Here we need just our key, and that's all. And this is our last model. And as you can see, here's the status pending. What does that mean? That means that we, we are in a line in the front and we have to wait once our model get on the, uh, on the training process, then we'll uh, change here the training. And then once we are fine, we will have success. So for purpose of on this course, so we will use already created model DaVinci custom flu model, what has the same data as we, we placed there in this file. And that's basically it. We can test it. This is our, uh, our completions. Here we can test it. As I mentioned, now our model is not still fine tuned. So we will use this model. This model has the same file, same data, but it's already it's, uh, ready, it's trained. So I use, let's use the flu prompt and just hit the send. And you see the JGPT give us the response and it will respond. respond. Yeah, so it's fine. Uh, so think of it as giving the model haircut focus crash course. 
By fine-tuning, we can make the model an expert in answering healthcare-related queries, uh, make it super helpful for users seeking healthcare information, so specific information. So in this step, we explore how to train the GPT-3 model using OpenAI's API and our own healthcare data. We also run how to fine tune models to make it perfect for our scenario uh, healthcare bot. Let's dive into creating a new Dikeflow agent and integrate it in with ChatGPT3. What is Dikeflow? Dikeflow is a powerful platform that allows us to build chatbots and virtual assistants. It it's it's use natural language processing NLP to understand user inputs and generate appropriate responses. Uh, in simple terms, Dialogflow help us create smart chatbots that can understand and communicate with users just like a human. So what we need to create Dialogflow, use, use Dialogflow. So first of all, let's go to the Dialogflow page. They, I have to, I mean, they have some issues, so, okay. Uh, we are in the Dialogflow and we have to first create new, new, new agent. So we have to click on the, on the bar and create new agent. Let's call it health health bot agent agent health bot agent uh default english default language going to be english default let's choose europe madrid and google project uh let's don't use nothing okay just create it's creating. It can take a while. Okay, said we are done. That's very good. So this is our, uh, our agent. And first of all, we want to go to the settings. So click on the this wheel and enable, let's enable all and save. Uh, uh, next, what we have to do, we have to get a service account for that. Here is your Google project, click on the, and it will redirect to the Google Cloud Console. In Google Cloud Console, we have to find API service credentials and create new credentials. Click on create new credentials and uh, let's choose, we have to choose service account. Uh, let's choose the name. So we call that health bot. Let's do agent the same agent. Okay, okay. And uh, health bot agent. Okay, done. As we create our service, uh, next step is in our service account. We have to create our keys here click and create new key json okay our, our file with the keys it's ready for now we will use it later uh, let's see the diag flow and we will discuss how diag flow work in a second now let's go through the dike flow and what intents are. So understand what intents are and how they are used in chatbots. Intents in chatbots are like 
predefined actions or responses that the bot can perform based on user inputs. They represent the different types of queries or tasks that the chatbot can handle. For example, we might have an intent for greeting the user, another for providing information about specific topic. So very good example of these intents are here the default uh, fallback intent and default welcome, uh, welcome intent. When it comes to direct flow, the welcome intent is the first interaction uh, the chatbot has with the user. Uh, it's the initial greeting or message that sets the tone for conversation. So basically here we can uh, see some uh, training words, phrases, which uh, if user use, we will respond him with some responses. Uh, these responses are uh, randomly placed. So, for example, we will use just, let's try, hi. And he will respond as, hi, how are you doing? So, which is actually first one. Also, this intent is same for the fallback intent. So, for example, we can predefine here, for example, back or some another, uh, another phrases, which our, our dialogue flow not supported. And if we place it, run it, it will go to do our responses. As we can see, I missed the say, I missed that say that again and which is here on the 12th. Okay. Uh, also, we can create our own intent. So let's create one and intent name and call it um, flu questions. Let's save it. Uh, our intent flu questions, we create this intent for purpose of for purpose of if user uh, action parameters, like action parameters, uh, train phrases actually here, a train phrases. So actually if user start talking about the, the flu viruses, and uh, some health issues, we will proceed the response here. So for example, let's play here flu, flu, uh, virus, mm, COVID. Okay, that's enough. And for responses, well, just for now, this is flu questions, questions. So let's test it, flu. And it doesn't recognize this these training phrases. So let's save one more time. And press flu. Uh, so channel. We need, let's say flu and save it as action parameter flu and also here flu and now it should be running and then it's n and this is flu questions as we can see now it recognize our 
our our intent so we have this action parameter and also if we place virus also it recognize uh, also we can have the we enable the small talk and small talk uh, is when a user plays some uh, some uh, some uh, for example question which can communicate with the regular person and we can also configure the answers for that about the agent or emotions there are some predefined questions which we can answer for our purpose it's uh, most important this flow questions uh, during this step we explore how to configure the welcome and fallback intents in the arc flow and also we create our own intents which we will use later for webhook to connect with chat gpt so welcome in the next chapter of our tutorial on building a healthcare chat bot with ChatGPT3. In this chapter, we will cover two important steps, writing the webhook fulfillment code in PowerShell and hosting the webhook API on Azure using Azure functions. So what is PowerShell? PowerShell is versatile scripting language that allows us to interact with uh, APIs and handle incoming requests in our webhook fulfillment. So we will uh, see it in a, in a moment. So to configure the webhook API, we will uh, set up HTTP trigger. First of all, here we are in Azure and you first have to create a function up yes you create a function and go through this process i already have one so if you don't just go over and uh, it's quite simple just don't don't forget here choose the powershell core because uh, with the powershell if you choose for example java you will don't have option options to uh, change the code on the web but you have to create locally so make sure you enter the powershell core so function up and i have this one and in this function we have to go to the functions and create new function uh, you see develop in portal choose http trigger uh, because uh, for our to handle the incoming request this trigger will serve as the entry point for direct flow to send the user queries to our webhook code we'll obtain the url of our azure function and set it as the webhook fulfillment url in the direct flow so HTTP trigger, we can change the name for um, health bot trigger and leave as a function. Okay, it's creating. Okay, we are done. Uh, for testing go to the code plus test so here is some predefined uh, code and we will use it just for testing purposes so we are set correctly to get a, a url what you will what you will use you just need copy copy from get functional URL, paste and presenter. And as we can see, we are good to go. It's actually text, text from here. 
So, what we what we have to do right now? Uh, in this step, we need to make sure we create a function here which will call the chat GPT actually chat GPT completions what we what we tested before this one we need basically call this API and make sure from direct flow if uh, user query will be pasted here in a prompt and then we need to make sure uh, azure powershell script will uh, properly uh, only take a text attribute and parse parse it uh, back to the direct flow for this i already prepared the script and I'm going to paste it and just go through. So, paste the script. So, what the script does? Here, it's just taking up a request. We're writing to the console. We understand it. And going to the next step. Actually, I think I paste wrong one. Yeah, this is it. This is, this is it. Uh, so just this writing to the console. Query, we parse our, our body, extract the, from the body query text. And here we have our URL for uh, for completions uh, here is our model what we created and here is the request body uh, here we set max tokens for 100 uh, this is the model query and headers you know, headers is authorization beer our our key what is necessary and here is just we proceed the request and catching the error so from here uh, we need so basically by combining these steps uh, we'll have a powerful webhook fulfillment code uh, written in powershell seamlessly integrating the diac flow and hosted on azure using azure functions so let's save it. Uh, our chatbot will be able to leverage the capability of ChatGPT and provide personalized responses to user queries, improving the overall user experience. So let's copy this URL, go to the Diac flow, and in Diac flow is necessary in fulfillment, enable webhook, paste the URL and that's actually it here should be the safe and let's test it if we make if it's properly implemented uh, let's open the flu questions yeah so just for example in the first actually clean it so we can see our output in the console and put flu This is flu question. So something is not working correctly and it's because we didn't enable fulfillment. So we have to enable the we'll call intent, call fulfilling, okay. And now it should go to the webhook. Okay, GPT response. As you can see, uh, uh, it recognized flu as the intent and in it sets, send the request to the 
our webhook and as we can see here it gives us our response to GPT and it's coming back to the Diac flow. So wrap it up. Uh, in this chapter we focus on uh, testing the chatbot monitoring its uh, performance, updating the base, the user feedback. So basically uh, we combine Diagflow and Azure and have very powerful webhook fulfillment called written in the PowerShell. We are now in the last step and once we have our Diagflow agent set up and integrated ChatGPT3 in our Azure, we are going to move on the implementing the chatbot into Flutter application. Uh, and for that, uh, we'll introduce to Diac flow package. Uh, Diac flow flutter package. Uh, you we we're going to use it for implementing Diac flow to the our our project. Uh, for that, I already created the project. We actually you just need copy this code. Uh, but first, of course, you need implement dependency. We need implement dependency Diac flow HTTP Google uh, APIs and uh, and also bubble chat bubbles. Then when you, when you implement it, pub get and place the code in the main. Uh, what is very important, don't forget, uh, place uh, JSON credentials what we, what we download uh, from the, our Google account. And don't forget to paste path to the out Google. Once we we have it this, and actually one more step. Uh, it's very important when you uh, when you are ready. You actually need go to do your Google project. And in your Google project, go to AAM and here grant access. You need grant access user all Diag flow service. I already did it, so I'm good to go. But if you don't, without this, you will always receive just empty empty response. So let's try run our code. Also uh, let's clean. So we can see if we touch Azure. Okay, first start, uh, just start with hello. Hi, how are you doing? This response is coming from Diagflow. And uh, let's try something what should go to do GPT. And as we can see GPT response, and here is our outcome what we predict, uh, uh, what we actually teach GPT. So let's check it here. As we can see, Azure was called. Congratulations on completing the tutorial on building healthcare bot with ChatGPT3, Diagflow, Azure and Flutter. You've come a long way and have gained valuable knowledge and skills in chatbot development. 
In this tutorial, we started by introducing the purpose of the tutorial and the benefits of building a healthcare bot. We explored the scope and purpose of the chatbot, focusing on its ability to provide quick and efficient responses to healthcare related questions and concerns. We learn how to create an open AI account and generate an API key to access to uh, GPT series, powerful language capabilities. We discuss different pricing plans. Uh, next, we divide it into training the GPT-3 model using OpenAI's API and fine-tuning it for your special healthcare use case. We then move on uh, creating a Diag flow agent and integrating it with ChatGPT 3 leveraging Diag flows powerful features for building chatbots. We explored the configuration of welcome and fallback intents in Diag flow which play a crucial role in creating a better user experience. We also covered writing web hook fulfillment code in PowerShell and demonstrated how to integrate it with Diagflow and ChatGPT3, all while using Azure for hosting the webhook API. But we didn't stop there. We took it a step further by implementing the chatbot functionality into a Flutter project using the Diagflow Flutter package. This allowed us to extend the reach of our healthcare bot to mobile applications, providing a seamless and interactive experience for users on the go. By combining the power of Diagflow Azure and Flutter, you now have a comprehensive toolkit to build intelligent and engaging chatbot applications in healthcare domain. We want to express our sincere thanks for joining us and this learning journey. Uh, we hope you found this tutorial insightful and empowering. Remember, the possibilities with the chatbot technology are vast. So for me, thank you for joining this course and happy flattering.